it's time to talk about Nintendo again. Except this time, we're talking about a court case involving Nintendo. Hey everyone, Bloodman Bobby here. So it seems like um, the multi-camera setup I had in my previous video went pretty well. I'm going to hold off for doing that in future videos because as I noticed that even though I was really glad I got to, you know, learn how to do multi-camera, uh, it was still kind of tricky to do. I noticed that I was off center in some shots and also it's just really hard to do multi-camera when I only have one monitor to work with. I am thinking about getting an HDMI recorder so maybe when I do get that recorder which has you know a built-in screen and I'll bring back multi-camera videos because I really did enjoy making that a previous video it's just that I think it should be done in a much more proper and better way. Okay, so if you've been following me for a while you know you know that I consider myself a pretty big Nintendo fan I've been playing their games for I would say nearly 20-ish years now because I started playing Nintendo GameCube games when I was in kindergarten and ever since then, you know, I've picked up pretty much um, every, not every iteration, but, you know, every console generation. I got, you know, the Wii, Wii U, 3DS, the original DS, and of course now I have a Nintendo Switch and it's been a lot of fun. I've been playing, I, I really enjoy playing like the Mario games, Animal Crossing. Crossing, Pikmin, the Excite Truck and Excite Bike series are also a lot of fun. Also the WarriorWare games. I do play my share of the Super Smash Brothers games every once in a while. I've recently gotten myself into Earthbound and I realized that wow, how Nintendo could actually tell some really compelling stories through their games. I really do want to uh, finish up playing in Earthbound because I do know um, some of what happens later on in the story of Earthbound and by extension I mean God, Mother 3 I mean good God I've seen the cutscenes of the fan translation of Mother 3 and it's just like it's a kind of story I, I'm I, I personally you know from my experience haven't seen <laughs> the kind of story you don't see too super often in Nintendo games and I really hope that you know Mother 3 comes to the states one day but as I learn about Nintendo you know over the years I've not just played their games I've also started to learn about you know the history of the company how the history of how their consoles are made and learning about of the people that run the company. I do like to, as much as I do like, you know, talking about good news of, of things that happen with Nintendo, oh, oh, I also do like talking about my more critical points of Nintendo every now and then because I feel like I get a better understanding of the company when I also learn about some of the more uh, questionable aspects of Nintendo. You know, not just being a fan, but I also le like learning about the business as well and even giving my critique on some things because I do want, you know, Nintendo to, you know, remain a, you know, a good relevant company. So what we're going to talk about today is a recent court case Nintendo was involved in in Europe. And that is I'm going to be looking down at I'm going to be looking at my iPad quite a bit in this video because there's quite a few notes to go over. And that is um, um, Euro Eurogamer said an attempt by German and Norwegian authorities to declare Nintendo's eShop practices illegal, primarily the one where you cannot cancel Nintendo eShop reorders. The Norwegian Consumer Council initially raised concerns over said practices back in February 2018, and they have teamed up with the German VZ EBV in order to bring the case before the Regional Court of Frankfurt. And the regional regional court of Frankfurt uh, sided with Nintendo in this decision, and that Nintendo isn't required to give cancellations to pre-orders. And, and Nintendo's defense said a European law saying a consumer's right of withdrawal disappears if quote the performance has begun with the consumer's prior express consent and his and his acknowledgement that he thereby loses his right of withdrawal. Which is basically how if you go to Nintendo Wii Shop and you pre-order a game, you have to click on a box basically saying, you know, you know, I understand, you know, once I, you know, click, click this box and pre-order the game, I cannot, you know, cancel the pre-order. And now Eurogamer said that both, both councils appealed the decision saying the delivery itself cannot begin until the game is available on launch day because the way pre-orders work on like the Nintendo Switch for example is that the game itself is downloaded to the Switch but you cannot play the game itself until 
the launch date, which will actually connect to the internet to check if it is the release day, and if it is not, then you cannot access the game. But Eurogamer said that it may take a year and a half before such a ruling is made in regards to the appeals from both the Norwegian Consumer Council and the German VZBV. My take on this is I definitely support the idea that the Nintendo eShop should support should allow for the cancellation of pre-orders because I think there's honestly a lot of reasons for people to cancel a pre-order. You know, even down to something like, you know, if maybe somebody accidentally pre-ordered a game. I mean, we all make mistakes. We're all human. So like maybe a, somebody was going for the eShop, thought uh, he or she was, was pre-ordering one game and was like, oh shoot i didn't mean to pre-order that so like maybe they got you know some of the games confused i actually have a couple other reasons down below maybe another example of somebody canceling a pre-order could be maybe if they're hearing that the game is not getting a a good reception like if they're hearing from like you know news outlets and youtubers that the game the game that the person pre-ordered is is like let's say it's getting like universally panned and it looks like there is no way the game itself you know is going to look up to the hopes and expectations of the customer and the last one I'll bring up here this is more of a theoretical example is let's say the publisher of the game announces some kind of shady policy like microtransactions or loot boxes like they don't make this announcement when pre-orders become available let's say a publisher announces you know microtransactions and loot boxes or any other kind of shady practices like just before the game itself comes out so i honestly think that may be another reason for somebody to cancel pre-order especially if it seems like the game itself is going to be rather dependent on such practices so i definitely think you know, there are legitimate reasons to cancel pre-order and i think the fact because like i've seen a lot of reaction to this news online like for comment sections and so forth of people saying you know well just don't you know pre-order games which i honestly think that should come as an alarming sign to nintendo because you know oh it's definitely a sign that, you know, not everybody, you know, pre-orders their games through the Nintendo eShop. And even me personally, I personally don't really take part in pre-orders super often. I think the main times I've pre-ordered games were like back in the Wii days when Xenoblade Chronicles and The Last Story were coming out. I remember me and my sis pre-ordered those games. And up until then, I think the last pre-order that um, we made was actually for the Nintendo Switch that I got. I actually, you know, pre-ordered it, paid for it with my own money, and I went to my local GameStop the night that the midnight that the Switch was coming out. So in those instances, you know, you know, we gave you know our full faith to Nintendo and saying, you know, we trust you. We're putting down our money. You know, we have faith in you. We're going to put down, you know, our own money, you know, down for this Nintendo Switch because, you know, we expect that the system is going to be, you know, really awesome and we're really excited. I mean, I definitely remember being really hyped up for the Nintendo Switch. I'm probably um, the most excited I've been for a Nintendo system in a long time. And by extension, I also hope that, like, a Nintendo would also, one of these days, it's not just the cancellation of pre-orders that I also hope that they would allow. They definitely don't allow for refunds of pre-orders um, in the States. If you, you go to the description of this video, you'll see I'll have a link to a support page from Nintendo of America that says that no, not even pre-orders can be refunded. But, all, but I also hope one of these days Nintendo considers turning around their refund policy just in general, like even for games that, you know, people have already be purchased from the Nintendo OE shop. You know, they definitely don't allow refunds for games that, you know, have already been released. Again, you know, kind of goes back into what I was saying earlier about, you know, there could be things like accidental purchases or maybe even like, especially in the case where if like, let's say the game is released, maybe the person didn't, maybe the customer didn't, you know, end up not liking the game too much. I know that's happened to me on my sis on a couple of occasions. Like 99% of the time when we make digital purchases on the Nintendo eShop, regardless of whether it's the Switch, 3DS, or Wii U, we're pretty happy with what we got. But the 1% of times where we find out that ooh, the game is not what we hope for, it gets, you know, it gets really, really 
low-key annoying. So, and I also think that's kind of, that's also why, you know, a lot of people may be turned off from the Nintendo eShop and say, you know, I don't like the Nintendo eShop's return policy, so I'm going to, you know, go to, like, a local store and stuff. Not saying I'm, you know, I do purchase, like, you know, half the games I purchase are still on physical media. Like, I recently just got, you know, Yoshi's is uh, Crafted World and Pokemon on sword using you know physical copies we bought those on cartridges i'm just saying for nintendo's sake if they really want people to use the eShop even more i think they need to have a much better return policy because i honestly consider their current one to be kind of dictatorial and the one time like one of the few times to my knowledge where they did cave and say okay we'll give refunds was when they released the port of tokyo mirage sessions on the switch in japan and the reason why in that case i think it was because people found out that you know the switch port it's the censored version that was released in the states and so i think in that particular instance because the backlash was big enough nintendo was like okay okay like look here's a online form form for our japanese customers that you can you know use if you want to get a refund for tokyo mirage sessions and even though in that, that instance, I am glad that Nintendo did say, you know, okay, we'll, you know, let you all, for a time, I might add, add um, get refunds. I still think, like, really, Nintendo had to be, like, pushed to do something that they should have done in the first place. I mean, I'm glad they did, but it's just, like, this should have been something they should have offered from the start. And as much as I do love Nintendo, I do know that... Um, um, at the core, especially on an executive level that, you know, and at the end of the day, I suspect the reason why they have such a, a, a they have such a shady a lack of return policy is because, you know, they really want to keep, you know, the money they get from sales. But I honestly think it's kind of shooting in themselves in the foot because as, as I've seen from a lot of people that say this is why you shouldn't pre-order that because of Nintendo's current return policies, that I think there's a reason why there's a lot of people who who would say things like, you know, oh, don't, you know, you really shouldn't pre-order using Nintendo eShop. So I honestly think that should come as a warning sign to Nintendo. Again, I'm not saying, you know, I want, you know, physical releases to just, like, you know, go off the face of the earth super soon. I'm just saying for Nintendo's sake, if they really want people to use the eShop more, they should allow for, you know, returns of games and the cancellation of pre-orders and so forth because i honestly think right now it's really kind of end of a a bit i honestly think that consumers are taking a bit of a risk especially for the eShop. again i would say like most of the time when me and my sister purchase games for the eShop, we're happy with the purchases but um is and i know an um, argument can be he made that, um, you know, of course, you know, we could just, you know, look up reviews for the games that, you know, to see if they're good or bad. And, but there is, I still think there is that slim chance that, you know, a customer could be like, well, what if I don't agree with the review and the game looks awesome? And then if it turns out that the game is not very good, I think the customer should have the option of being able to return it. So I want to hear your thoughts down below. What do you think of Nintendo's current uh, return and pre-order policies for the Nintendo eShop. Leave all those thoughts down below. Until next time, this has been Blood Moon Bobby, and thank you all for watching. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this Blood Moon Bobby video. Like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel to see more of my videos, and ring the bell to be notified about my latest uploads. Don't forget to follow me on social media for my latest opinions and video updates. I hope to see you next time.